All right, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of Garage Night. Garage Night brought to you by uh, Coal Street Brewery, 1627 Coal Street, Enumclaw, Washington, where your uh, podcast gear, full buddy cast podcast gear and get 20 oh no 15 percent off uh hey by the way real quick i want to say this um they have a coffee stout delicious i'm gonna get that growler of it for um for thanksgiving it it's like a dessert it tastes amazing so go get that see if see if you like it maybe like surprise people at uh, at your thanksgiving um by grabbing that oh man i'm already out of breath so also went because of the tea canchiladas I've been eating. <laughs> tea canchiladas at Mazatlan, absolutely dead. Because uh, I've been eating too many of those. But uh, had that this week too. Got to see Andy, say hi to him. I got to talk to him about something when it comes to like, hey, what? It, he he said, just don't worry, just have people come in. He'll hook them up. Just mention the podcast, and then also, of course, go to Bordeaux Wine Bar as well. Um, get two dollars off your first drink, and uh, mention the podcast as well. <sighs> You're right. I'm out of breath. I brushed my teeth right before. Yeah, that's why you're out of breath. Yeah, I, and that, it's, it's because it, it kind of like coats the mouth where you can't breathe as easily. It's like putting just like a, a film. You ever get that? No. Sure. All right. Uh, we got Craig Bentley on the mic. Hey guys, I'm over here. I'm Craig Bentley. Did, did you guys hear about that new Harry Potter show? Oh that's my be gosh, on? I can't wait. Yeah, Quidditch. <laughs> and we got his brother uh, Corey Bentley on the mic. Oh god, Craig, I'm so disappointed in your <laughs> intro. That's so bad. <laughs> and me, Travis Kenny. The thing we're laughing about is uh, Craig's not here yet, but we're gonna get started. We got we got we got to pump some episodes out because we're hitting the holidays soon. So, um, I'm gonna save. I'm going to save my finger story, finger strong, hashtag finger strong, for... Uh, There's for, so many surgeries coming through this place. Dude, it's nuts. People going down. It's, to me, you know what it is? Hmm. It's the vaccine. Is that what it is? <laughs> I guess I'm going to get superpowers. Still, <laughs> Still. <holding> hope. <laughs> hey, is that booster ready yet? <laughs> <laughs> Give me all of them. So here's another thing, though. I've also hit, um, I don't know why, but from time to time... Um, I need a deep conversation. No, yeah. and I need a, I need a mat. So today I was like, dude, I've got a bunch of thoughts going through my head. It's probably a good thing Craig isn't here yet, so we can get kind of deep with Corey. And so, then so Craig can't ruin. He's it. gonna he'll he he just won't be a participant anyways. <laughs> and then he's gonna walk in on this, and he's gonna hear the story, like the conversation. He's gonna just walk out. Just this is just gonna be you and me today. Is this what's gonna be like today? <laughs> <laughs> I, I fought in traffic for this. <laughs> Why did I even drive here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's what kind of got me off the rails, okay? As a man of faith, mm-hmm. okay, obviously, you know, when you are a man of faith, typically you believe in one higher power, mm-hmm. okay? Um, some people will believe the universe, but that's that one higher power. Some people will believe in God. Some people, it, Allah, like you got so many different ones out there you can choose from, but typically it's the creator, the one that did it all. Something okay? that's bigger than yourself. Something, a higher power that's mm-hmm. bigger than yourself. Yeah. So for me growing up in, in the Pacific Northwest and, you know, growing up as a Lutheran, you know, I w- went to church predominantly at a Christian Lutheran, you know, church and so then i went on to bible college and then i was a youth pastor for a little bit i've always believed in god here's the thing that's kind of like jabbing at me right now okay the reason it's jabbing at me is because in revelation the last book of the bible it's talking about the great deception that there's going to be this huge like lie and you know you could look at all you know it's been speculated in the past where the lie could be like um, uh, evolution was a lie, or 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 that uh, the lie is that everyone goes to heaven, or there's gonna be some huge lie that everyone believes. Okay, now I had my here's what I think's that that big lie. Mm-hmm. Okay, you ready to get deep? Yeah. Okay, I'm. I think yes. it's a, I think it's aliens, mm-hmm. and I think the have we talked about this before? Mm-mm. I think the aliens are gonna come down okay. at some point. 
And you can see it's getting prepped. I watched Ancient Aliens. I know this sounds weird, but you know, UFOs and and the military coming out. There's some stuff out there that with technology, it can't be an it's probably an unmanned uh thing. Have you seen some of this stuff? I've seen a few. I think it's naive to believe that we're the center of the universe. Right. Okay. But but when you read, let's just say the Bible, mm-hmm. or you read American history. Or you read world history, there's this just like centric view that we are it. That is primarily a human trait, though. Right, right. In your in your own life, you like the people think they're the center of their the universe. Like that's yes. just a trait of okay. Everything. Now okay, now we're going down this path, and I want to get down this path with you, which is I'm excited. We got Craig Bentley coming on in. Craig, we we're, we're going kind of deep with Corey first. I hate your face. <laughs> That's he has no clue that we're talking about aliens, and he just came in with the most stellar alien voice I've ever heard. I hate your face. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So you just relax over there for just a moment. We're gonna get the we're gonna get the kind of deep with Corey out of the way. Now just calm down. Yeah, over just there. take your your planet your zero. Get your fruit punch going. Um. We did a great job, by the way, of introducing you uh, with your voice. I doubt it. It, it was way better than that voice you came in with today. <laughs> <laughs> so my great, de- the great deception in, in my mind, Craig's gonna be like, "What the heck are you guys talking about?" But is that aliens are gonna be will visit us down the road? I'm not saying tomorrow. I'm not. There's gonna be something that visits us. Do you think they haven't already historically? No, I think probably they have. You okay. look at all these ancient alien freaking TV shows, and you're seeing like, so George Washington was 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 uh, visited uh, by a being in an, uh, of light that told him that you're going to be Brit- British, the British, and and America is going to be a thriving country, and it gave him confidence to keep going on. Uh, they just I just watched that one today, but they've got these different you know paintings. You could go down there, YouTube it, you'll see it. Ugh, makes you go crazy, but. Here's the deception in my mind. If I'm some, if I am God, okay, and uh, and and and, the, and I know that there's going to be this great battle at the end between the devil and God and the angels and the demons, and da, 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 okay. I think those aliens are going to be fake. I don't going to be real. Fake. I don't going to be in my mind. This is my deception. Okay, they're going to be like demons or something like that. They're going to be a deception, mm-hmm. and they're gonna be like, oh hey, you know who uh, Jesus was? That was this guy right here. He was this alien that visited you. Oh, hey, you know that uh, Muhammad guy? You know? Yeah, that was him over here. Hey, you know that Buddha guy? All right, over here. And it's going to be all these. Th- this is where Moses was visited. This is where these are all these different people that were visited. And it's going to turn out that all those stories were humanly true because it was just an alien visiting somebody and creating, like, that they, they have the technology to walk across water. They have the technology to raise from the dead. They have the technology to do these great signs and wonders. That's my, that's so this is okay. So now Craig's asleep. So you're saying that the aliens have been the benchmark to test your faith and who you are as a person along the way. Yes. Because they're that, that they say that, or the revelation says that, it's going to be such a deceptive lie, the great deception, that even the people that are like God's children would will be, like well, want, let to, me ask want to believe it. This because it's, it's along the same lines. Down. If if you believe that in the at the end when you go to heaven you will be judged by God yeah. of yourself, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. What if the great deception is you're not judged? Based only on that, you're judged based off how you've interacted with people who he's put in front of you, but also told you that they're not right. So what you're saying is this, because the Bible does say that you could be entertaining angels, or the Bible does say that, you know, there's people that said, hey, I gave I gave water in your name, and Jesus is going to be like, I never knew you. So but- my, my example of this would be somebody, like, you see, religion is used for so many negative things. And Just you see somebody for fear for you see somebody like the the West Baptist Church, yeah, Westbrook, yeah, 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 and they take that, so they truly believe that. So if you truly believe something and you're taking that and you're forcefully doing that, what if that's your test? What if that's your test is your reaction to something that was put in front of you? Yeah, see, that's a good question. That's a great question. 
Um, I, maybe that, you know, we're so focused on if I, am I making the right decision, the wrong decision? Am I worried about if I'm doing this or doing that wrong? But it actually comes down to, are you the, the Bible? Jesus does say all the commandments are brought down to two love God and take care of others, love others, love and at, others. And yourself. at the core, so that's it. I mean, that's what, interesting. In, in your personal, uh, decisions in life and your beliefs, that person across the country or across like their personal beliefs and choices have zero effect on yours. Me at all. So yeah. your personal choices can still be the same. You can still be judged the same way without going and affecting that other person. Right. Or bringing them pain or bringing or them hate. Because yeah. now if you bring hate yourself to them, you've now changed yourself. Yeah. And why wouldn't you be judged for that hate that you just brought to the other person? Craig, do you wish you were back in traffic? <laughs> <laughs> that's good so here's my next here's the next one that goes down the road okay want to go down the road with me a I, little bit more i'll go down any road with you anyone any road okay except for that one where you threw those playboys hey i impacted some kids that day <laughs> i don't want to go down that road <laughs> um so then i started thinking about how i live my life and i think that maybe i attract people not everyone but some people out there have either ask themselves the question about themselves or about somebody else and that is do rules not apply for so and so for instance i feel like and i don't know if this is a human trait i looked it up i started googling stuff is it a human trait to let you allow like some rules apply to me, not all of them though, but they definitely apply more to other people and not to me. Is that a human mindset? It's a human trait to want to be able to do what you want to do and not hold yourself to the standard all the time that you should. Right. But at the end of the day, the choices that you're making have nothing to do with anybody else. You hold yourself to those choices. Like, if you're by yourself Except somewhere, if someone catches you doing it. But it doesn't matter if they catch you or not. You still did it. Okay. Like, you're responsible for yourself. The other person catching you is doesn't matter. Like, if you steal and right. nobody catches you, guess what? You still stole. That's still right. your personal okay. choice. All right. That's still on you as a person and the choice that you've made of who you want to be. Okay. Catch the, the catching is a consequence. Yeah. And sometimes that doesn't even change the person, but you still have made that choice. Okay. You make choices every day on your own without any input from anybody else about who you want to be as a person. So then how come people, when they steal, typically it's not people that, they know stealing's wrong, but for whatever reason, they've justified it in their brain, whether it's, uh, you know, I'm not talking like going in and stealing something from the grocery store. You could steal time from work. You know, like, well, they barely pay me what I'm worth. And so if I fudge an hour here, or fudge an hour there, it doesn't like there's always something, you know, oh, so and so is always doing this. So I'm going to do this. Like, you're always in my, I don't know, maybe not everyone's the same way as me. I'm always justifying myself on things. Go to the casino. I haven't been to the casino for a while. I haven't lost this much money in a long time. Uh, you know what? Let's take some more money out. And then if Jamie took money out, I'm like, why are you taking money out? We're saving money for stuff. But for me, I'm like, eh. No big deal. It's a hundred percent a human trait. That's just a human everybody, trait. though, because Craig? you go down that road, yes, okay. to try to make yourself feel better about what you just uh, did. Yeah, you don't. You don't want to be hard on yourself. But you. But you are now. Are you? Am Corey, I? Are you hard on yourself? A lot more now than I was. Mm -hmm. I look at my decisions. I look at things that I do in the context of it. It's my life, my choice. I get to choose. To not let other people affect me, my mind, and who I am. So I'll live my life a certain way. And it doesn't have to be, like, your choice doesn't have to be religious. It doesn't have to be anything. Just yeah, being no, I'm just a about, good I'm person not in about religious. general. I'm talking just like can, normal. It's yeah. just making choices to not have an interaction with somebody or let somebody get you to the point where that negativity erupts. on that. And, and making decisions in your life that aren't, you don't have to justify things to yourself. So, because you're just doing what you're supposed to be doing. Okay. And nobody's 100% perfect. I'm not saying that either. Yeah, no, I know that. Yeah, I know. But I'm just, I am also saying, like, at least I know for me. And then I started thinking, well, is that with everybody? For me, it's like, hey, you know what? If I do this, it's just because this is just what I do. That's just who I am. And then 
but then if someone else does it, I'm like, whoa, easy, pal. What are you doing that for? Kind yeah, of it's thing. easier to see it in other people than yourself. Right. And we justify stuff all the time. Like, and we don't need stuff. I didn't need that new truck I just got. Like, we justify wanting stuff more than so, needing okay, stuff. Okay, so, that was, so that was, that's what I was reading online, too, is that entitlement sometimes, as we're raised, and for whatever reason, something clicks... Where the things that we want, we think we need, um, and then the things that we kind of really definitely need, it's like, oh, I just kind of want that. But no, we actually need that. And a lot of that comes from societal pressure of you You look at somebody else and you go, oh, that, they have that. Like, right. I sh- they don't seem like they're better than me. I should have that too. That that type of stuff is what creeps into your mind right. and like almost poisons yourself to believe that you need all this stuff that you don't need yeah. and it's the same thing as uh, what all the ads are targeted like all that stuff is all meant to oh, get yeah. in your it's head all, to it, tell it, you it's you 30 seconds it. of telling you you don't have it you don't yeah. have it and then you watch something else 30 seconds you don't have it you don't have it and then instead of facebook or instead of watching the commercials on tv you jump on facebook during that th- commercial and you see somebody going to hawaii you see somebody going, like I wish I that. I what I you that. don't understand is mm-hmm. what that person's mental state is, what their financial state right. is, what they actually have going on in their life. All you see is what's portrayed. Right. We're preyed upon. Yeah. We're preyed upon. We're told what we think. We, Yeah. So anyway. So entitlement. Craig, have you felt like you've ever been entitled to anything? I think 98% of the people that live in this country feel like they're entitled. And 98? They, and they are. When you and you, me and Corey are like the 2% that don't? No. Oh. I think everybody that lives in this country is, has more than they need, and they don't realize it. Um, do you think – I'm going to ask you this question, okay? I'm going to ask you the same question, Corey, so think about it. Uh, this is the personality test in a sense. When you play fantasy football, do you want to pick up a – like let's just say someone – that you're going to start someone that is solid that will make you win. Like let's you know you have Derrick Henry typically Derrick Henry is going to go off or do do well, or do you like it when you grab the waiver wire guy that not everyone's looking at and that guy goes off and gets you the win? What's your what's your more? What do you feel is the the best way to win? I take pride in the waiver wire or starting somebody that nobody else would. Corey, I think it's just the strategy in general for me. Just the dra- like the draft the people, and then part of it's the waiver wire. It's all goes together of just putting together the best thing that can put me in the position to beat everybody else that I need to. Are you looking to wow people when you win? No, I just I need to beat you by one point. Are you looking to wow people when you win? I'm looking to piss people off. And I so does that mean like if you win by one point and that pisses them off because they're like oh I'm so close, or if they or if, if the personality of someone that just they can handle like losing by a point but they definitely can't handle losing by 40 points, and so you go off on them for 40? No, I don't think it's a an issue of, if we're talking that, like how bad you beat somebody. But let's say I should have started a wide receiver, and I didn't on purpose, and I started somebody on Monday night because I like starting people on Monday night, and that guy makes me win. Well, obviously that person's probably going to be pissed because the person I was supposed to start maybe didn't do all that well, but nine out of ten people would have started that person. Yeah. I'm I'm happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Monday Night. Yes. Um, I like to wow people. I like to be the guy who grabs the waiver wire, the Dearness Johnson, and then all of a sudden Nick Chubb tests positive for COVID. And you're like, whoa, how do you see that one coming? And it was just dumb luck because I was like, well, Kareem Hunt's not coming back. I need to grab Dearness Johnson just in case. Um, and then now all of a sudden – he gets COVID and everyone checks the waiver wire. Like, what the heck? Where's the earnest? What? Travis got him like three days ago. How did he know? I love that. I love that. I just, ooh, that gets me going. But then I get stressed out on Sunday when he, does, you know, he's like, doesn't, if he doesn't get any points and it's like, don't worry, he's the only running back. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, well, play, he'll play every snap. I just traded, uh, well, I just traded fantasy football, but I just traded for, I traded Kareem, an injured Kareem Hunt. Semi injured coming back from injury, Dawson Knox, and I also traded. Uh, um, uh, who was the third? Who was the third? 
Can't remember. We're not in your league, so we don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I traded I traded him for uh um Kamara. Oh, uh yeah, I traded him for Kamara and uh oh I traded and Leonard Fournette. Okay, so I had traded Leonard Fournette. Um who'd I say? Dawson Knox come back from injury, and then Cream Hunt, who's still on IR for for Kamara and for Mark Andrews. And then Kamara gets yeah, he's out. He's out. But I, the funny thing is, three days prior, Mark Ingram sit on the waiver wire, and I know this trade's going to go through. So I picked up Mark Ingram just as a little bit of a just in case. Thankful I did that. So that's what that's what gets me going. Anyway, are you easy to talk trash to? Like, what do you mean? Like, do you, does it get to you when people say stuff or when people do things or like if you get beat by somebody that's talking trash to you, is it worse than if you just lose to somebody that hasn't really said much? Uh, talking trash, I'm used to it. You know, when I grew up in the 90s, that was like the era for NBA to talk trash with people. I think that when it comes to playing in a physical sport with someone, you kind of need that talking trash that Gary Payton, Michael Jordan, just sitting there, just John, 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 because it gets in their head that Richard Sherman just get in their head, and it kind of gets them to be not as focused on, on the actual play, at that time. When you're playing fantasy football, I don't really feel like there's. I mean, you could like rib someone, like, oh man, that sucks that Patrick Mahomes isn't doing anything for you. But it comes down to fantasy football just being luck. It's all. I mean, it's just like playing poker with someone. Like you're, it's 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 an, it's educated guesses. Like you're like, okay, this person's hope, you know, gonna go against this type of a defense, and I feel like he's gonna be, he's gonna get most of the snaps, and then he goes in there, and then on the first play he fumbles, and then he breaks his leg, and you're <laughs> like, well, well, no, well, I look like an idiot, no. I guess. So, not really. You? Does it bother you? Not anymore. Like it, I used to let it get to me, but now I think it's very hard to talk trash to me now about anything because I just don't like you're. I'm gonna do what I have to do regardless of what you say, so it doesn't really make a difference to me what you say to me anymore. So, is there anything that someone could say to you right now? You don't have to say it. Very that could get under, or is it who says it? it doesn't even matter. Like, it doesn't matter who says it. No. Like I can get underneath my brother's like skin within seconds because he, I, I know the button. You can probably tell too. It's very hard to talk to say anything to me. It's really going to get to me anymore. Was it hard? Was it? Is it harder now? I don't. I mean, I used to talk Tucker, so much trash, but get him. lately I haven't even talked trash. I, yeah, it got to a point where it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, he will Jared though. But we don't play I didn't basketball. Even, but I did, but yeah, but I didn't even like when I played Jared this year. I didn't talk tr- trash or nothing. I I just fantasy football is different for me. Yeah. Like, See, I I'll get a text message from Jared trying to like he'll text me and he'll try to like poke a little bit. And I'll be like, hey man, I hope hope you have a good week. Good luck. And that's all I'll say back to him. Oh, like it's nothing well, for me to be like. Why would I go back and forth? <laughs> well, I think that's fun. Okay, so let me let me back up a little bit now that I think about it more. I like to do the little prod, like the, like the. Uh oh, look out! That's what I mean. Is like because he'll he'll change his lineup like six or seven times, yeah, just to like try to mess with who he's yeah. playing. Well, and that and see, my cousin does that. My cousin will drop everybody onto his bench, yeah, and then he will slowly roster him, roster him as the game. You know, like let's say the Thursday game, he'll just put the Thursday guy out there. Right. So he'll do stuff like that, which is fun. Um, I think the thing that bothers me is when it comes to trades. And people talk trash about trades. You know, I know that... Because it's subjective to value. It is. Yeah. And it's like, oh, why Why would you ever trade him that for that? Or or you send a trade and they're like, uh, pff, no. And you're like, are you kidding me? I put this in every single fantasy football trade analyzer because I really want that player. I'm sure you really want that player. But just tell me, nah, you know, I like my player. Rather than you think I'm just trying to like screw you over, I'm overly loading up for you. Jonathan Taylor, I wanted Jonathan Taylor from one guy. Mm. He had three guys on a buy. I was going to send him four net. He needed a running back. Uh, also, Renfro, because he just lost, uh, who's the other guy? That just... Rugs. 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 And... Uh, he didn't have a. He had Aaron Rodgers who just went on COVID, and he had no buy quarterback. And I 
and Burrow. Now I know that doesn't sound like the most like yeah, I wouldn't accept that trade either. But it was like his his reaction was like I wouldn't accept the trade, but I would my whole thing with trades is at least say tell me why. Yeah. Like tell me where your value is so then I, we, I see how I need far a, apart I, we are. I need a running back bad. I wanted to upgrade my running back. We'll uh, he'll, we'll try this when on one of the next episodes that you'll hear. Yeah. I will try to live trade Jared. Okay. And we'll see cuz he has Taylor. And oh. we'll see what he values and we'll see what Okay, what he I wants like to that. Do I like that. That's good. Okay. Cool. Um I'm going to tell my finger story. Can I tell my finger story? Did you show Craig your finger? It's got a bandaid on it now. Oh. That looks like a paper cut. Okay, listen. <laughs> listen. Looked, I don't know if like you've ever tried to stabbed him. Yeah, okay. So this is how it went down. Two and a half weeks ago, Craig doesn't care. Craig's back to sleep. <laughs> Two and a half weeks ago, I pull a hangnail. Now I've done this like five years ago, where the hangnail gets a little infected and it gets a little red and it might get a little bit of a little white head of some, you know, some pus or whatever. And you take a little needle, you pop it, and then it's good. This thing, my finger just kept getting larger and larger and larger and redder and redder. You popped it with a needle? And I tried popping it. Believe it or not, the first time I did it, I just heated up a, an old Safeway uh, name badge. <laughs> 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 just, just uh, No, it didn't work. So At I least did you it. heated it up, though. I'm proud that you like sterilized it. You got to sterilize it, it. yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just proud that you did that. <laughs> I thought you were infected because you tried stabbing yourself with something you didn't sterilize. Just a, bu- just a <laughs> box knife. Safeway <laughs> box knife. So... I uh, so yeah so it starts puffing up and you know like every night it just hurts it's throbbing it's throbbing I'm going to sleep I just feel this thing just throbbing anyway and it's my finger by the way I want everyone to understand when I say I'm going to sleep and it's throbbing I'm talking about my finger right now that's nothing else to be even th- thought about else uh, other things moving on I uh, woke up on Thursday Thursday and it was just red. From the tip of my finger all the way down, like it was blood poisoning. Now I punched Trevor. Uh, Trevor, um, he was in my grade. I just blanked. I can see his uh, uh, not Jennings. Trevor um, Gibson. Gibson. I punched him one time, joking around like we we're air fighting. When I was like in eighth grade, I nicked his his tooth with my knuckle. Thought nothing of it. A week later, I mean, it's your kid. You get scabs all the time. Next thing you know, what? What are you talking? What are you? Are you still wearing your hospital bracelet? I am wearing my hospital <laughs> bracelet right now. Jeez. It's, it's his allergy. Uh, <laughs> Tw- it, Twenty four hours after, you don't need that anymore. So I had See, guys. I was there <laughs> just to show everyone I was there. Uh, this isn't free rides at the uh, at like. At, Whatever, uh, Busters, well, David Busters. Is that just in case you had to go back? You could just show him that? Get yeah, back like, in. hey, I'm back. You get free backs in the hospital. <laughs> they don't charge you again if you have your bracelet still. <laughs> anyway, I had blood poisoning that went up to my arm. If they said it would, if the doctor said, because I was like, my mom would be like, what's going on with your arm? I'm like, yeah, I nicked this guy's. So they said if it would have got to my heart, I probably would have died because I had that much blood poisoning. If I would have got any up to a major artery up here, I probably would have my arm amputated. It was that bad. That was eighth grade? That was like eighth grade. Yeah, it's the eighth grade pit when I punched him on accident. It was just joking around, nicked his tooth, no big deal. Anyway, I go in there, they're like, dude, teeth, dog teeth, and cat claws are like the dirtiest things you can get scratched by. And uh, so, like normal human teeth are just nasty, they said. so. Did you rip out your hangnail with your teeth? Yeah, I did bite it. There you go. You infected yourself. Just a vampire just infecting <laughs> myself. So anyway, so I've seen blood poisoning before. So I knew I'm like, crap, I'm getting blood poisoning on my, or, you know, it's it's infected. It's moving down. Should have just chopped your finger off right there and been done with it. I might as well have, because when I went there, first of all, I call my, my insurance and, and, you know, I'm not, I don't know if, I don't know how much my hospital bill is going to be, but I went. To the emergency room, obviously. But I call the insurance. They're like, oh, yeah, we can't, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm like Kaiser Permanente. So I'm like, I could only go to like maybe Puyallup and Kent and Tacoma or Seattle. But there's nothing close. And so in the network, they're like, yeah, sorry, you know, um, all doctor's appointments are, are full. That was after waiting for half an hour to talk to somebody. Uh, we can go to the, you can go to the clinic, though. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, we get you in like about 20 minutes from now. And I'm like, 
do you have anything else? Like, I'm 40 minutes from anything right now. <laughs> and they're like, uh, yeah, no. Yeah, you can go to Tacoma or Seattle. Wait, they're 24 7. You can just wait for a while. And uh, I'm like, oh, no, this thing's killing me right now. So I went down to the Enum Claw Franciscan Hospital. Go check in. They see it. They're like, yeah, we need to do something about this. So I go sit down in the, in the, uh, they, they bring me to a room. I sit down in the room and they're like, okay, uh, doctor's going to see you soon. You know, they do my vitals, check my weight and all that fun stuff. <sighs> Stupid, <laughs> dumb. <laughs> like, I just got my finger. I'm like, well, you know how, how much I weigh. You should have did that live. <laughs> uh, he's, so the doctor comes in, this dude comes in with like this chick who's like 19. And he's like, hey, so we've got a trainer here. She's shadowing me today. Are you okay with her being here? I said, yeah, that's fine. No problem. Okay, cool. Well, we'll see you in about you know 15 more minutes. Why don't you hang out here? We're going to have someone uh, prep you for, we're going to have to numb your finger. And Okay, cool. So this lady comes in. She leaves. You know, 15 minutes later, they come back in. Now, I thought job shadowing would be that she was going to watch him do it. No. So she sits down next to me, flips my finger, my hand over, and goes, okay, we're going to clean this area right here. And then he's telling her where to stick this needle to numb my finger. Like, she has no clue where to stick. It's like they could have got somebody off the side of the road and just said, hey, that's how they – think. here, this is where you're going to poke them. Pokes me. <laughs> Hurt. I looked away. Didn't want to see it. Credit to me. Flip me back over again. Boom, boom. Two more pokes. She, he's still telling her where to where to do it. Like she's no clue. Did she hit the marks though? She hit the marks. Right. Numb. You know, it takes about a half hour for for my my finger to start to numb up, and then they get a scalpel. And I'm thinking, okay, she's just gonna do the shots. He's gonna do the scalpel. No. How do you so, expect her to learn? That's a learning hospital. She needs to watch <laughs> because I'll tell you this: my I watched my finger get murdered. I watched a homicide on my finger. What she did was she took the scalpel and he, she thought that he he just said go hit just just hit this pocket here. She went underneath my nail all the way around and out the side, and I'm like, ouch! <laughs> I still felt that. Then he's like, "Oh no, I didn't mean for you to do it like that. <laughs> Why don't you go hit, hit, hit this right here, put it, put it flatter." So then she, she like puts it flatter right across my nail, and then just he goes, "Give it a jab." She jabs me a quarter of an inch in and back out, and he goes, "No, you need to go deeper, but hit it higher up." So then she goes higher up, goes quarter or goes halfway in, and then pops back out, and he goes, "No, that's you're, you're not going deep. You have to angle it a different way." This girl like jabbed me like six or seven times with this scalpel in my hand, fully filleted my finger. I am put some marinade uh, sauce on there. You can put it on a barbecue. It tastes delicious. Because then he go so just like your father would if you if you if you're if you're working on a car and your dad's like no no use this wrench and just gotta pull it and and you're like pulling it and he's like no pull it. yeah yeah get in there and pull it come on get your hand in there and pull it. He literally grabbed that scalpel and just goes no it's like this bam bam. He just, out of frustration and, and, and like she wouldn't do what he said, just grabbed the freaking knife out of her hand and just goes, whap, whap. In, and it, granted, he hit the spots, but it was a little too forceful. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, I was seeing stars. It was, I was ready to pass out. Then he looks at you and goes, you agreed to this. And then he goes, yeah. And then he like takes the scalpel and just like, protect, he goes across <laughs> his neck like, hey. Don't even don't, don't say nothing. <laughs> she doesn't work here. I'm trying to impress her. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, that's that's was I maybe I don't know. So today I took 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 today off of work because it just hurt. You know, I'm, I'm a keyboard warrior, and I was just like, I don't want to bang this thing against the keyboard. I don't want to sit there for two hours or eight hours trying to figure out you know how to how to type again. So it hurt. It still hurts. It's it's still throbbing. But I gotta soak this thing like. Give me antibiotics. I take four antibiotics a freaking day, which is crazy. Got some Epsom salt in there. Uh, they said, believe it or not, they said no Epsom salt. Oh. It's just straight up soak it in regular warm water. So I've been doing that, listening to the doctor, doing the right thing. But uh, did she tell you that, or did he? Uh, he said it. Okay. No, 
She's like, I don't know. <laughs> Probably just put some water. Maybe yeah. some, maybe put some Kool Aid in there. Yeah, I don't know. Go for it. <laughs> just mix it, mix the Kool Aid with your finger. <laughs> That's actually blood. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. <sighs> anyway, so traumatic. Anyway, yeah. So, um, anything, anything on your side, Craig? As far as what life, like hating doctors. He's gonna, yeah, he's gonna have a real thing, and you you have a finger thing. <laughs> what happened for you? I got surgery on Tuesday. <clears throat> Coming up? Yeah, that's where I was when I said I I had traffic going from Auburn to Bonnie Lake. I was thinking like where? Uh, so tra- traffic from Auburn? So you're making it sound like I had traffic from okay. Auburn to Bonnie Lake. Yeah. I was supposed to take five minutes to go get a COVID test for pre-surgery. That yeah. everybody got to do it. Right. And I go in, and the people there were completely stupid. They said there wasn't a uh, test waiting there for me, so they had to do an office visit. And I'm like, charge me for an office visit. I could care less. Just give me the test. So I had to actually go into the room, do like you said, vitals and everything. They come in, and I'm like, I just want to get a test. I don't even care. Charge three office visits. I just want the test so I can get out of here. Right. Finally got the test. He said, charge three it. times. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> got him, guys. Yeah. You, got, you record that? <laughs> Works again. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm having uh, surgery on my foot on Tuesday. Now, can we talk about the sur- the foot surgery? Is oh, it, I don't care. Because I just told you that. It's I, a tendon. Oh. It, so, you know how what R- Russell Wilson had on his finger? Me, yeah. I got the same thing. Well, yeah. The real one. But how he had a, how he had a pin. <laughs> yeah. Yes. How yeah. he had a pin in it. Yeah. I will have a pin in my toe for like two to four weeks. Did you do the same? Were you throwing a football exact, and hit a helmet? Yeah. <laughs> they actually don't. I don't know. I think I might have did it during softball season. During karate? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Breaking a board <laughs> with, my, <laughs> with my bare foot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they don't know when I did it, but uh, it's beyond fixable without having surgery. So is it is it flopping around in your, in your foot right it's, now? Uh, you, yeah, it's kind of. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's. Yeah, if you saw it, it would be kind of sticking up, kind of weird, like his finger was. Really? Yeah. So they got. They I've been put... just kind of suffering through it, but it's got to a point where it started hurting a little bit. Yeah. So. I always wondered about that when we were doing two foot jump jump stops, stops doing uh, basketball. Sometimes you would just slap that foot and you just feel your, the end of your toe, <laughs> feel like your toes are just flying off the end of your foot. And after I saw Russell's thing, I'm like, I wonder if I ever did that to my to my end of my toes. But you definitely did. I did something. They don't know. What do you think? happened so everything that, that they've said it was something it had to have been something dramatic that happened it got hit or something but what they what they told me is i punched his foot if you knuckles. if you've continued like for instance i've been i've wore work boots forever and if you wear tight shoes over and over again you're more susceptible to your toes or anything like that doing something like that. So when you wait, wait, when you say tight shoes, you mean like the t- too narrow of shoes or really? like my cleats for for softball are pretty tight. You just wedge them together. Yeah, you're like and a ballerina in there with those things. Basically, that's, just, that's why at a certain age you have to go to the New Balance wide shoes. Yeah, that's why I'm you just see going them straight <laughs> wide from now on. <laughs> straight wide shoes, no matter what. Gotta get the W. Uh, you, you don't even go buy them at Fred Meyer anymore. You get them custom made. <laughs> yeah. God, that would be a good commercial for them. Got to get the W. Start selling white. You're on to something. Yeah. So hey, yeah. Hey, sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll you're see out there. It. We'll see how that goes. I won't be able to. They're they're they they're saying I hopefully get the pin out within two to four weeks. So and Russell Wilson did it. So I know I can. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Why not you? <laughs> He's, he's gonna rehab that foot like he's got a playoff push to make. Why not? Why not? Yes. So that's kind of so that's what I did when I called my mom yesterday. I was like telling her it. And she's like, "Wow." She's like, "It's your middle finger." I'm like, "Yeah." She goes, "Well, you should do like some Russell Wilson like post about it." So that's where that came from. But I really think since you're getting the same thing done, you should just do like the RW three video that he did where he's just like rehabbing, just in the in the. Uh, you know, Jim just just sweating it out. Probably not. Just no. a picture of Craig in the, his garage, just <laughs> just on the treadmill. No, actually, what I'm trying. You you're not supposed to like move for a week. Just, it's just with one leg, though. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, but, not be, even the leg I got surgery yeah. on. It would be great is if you did it serve. You, if it wasn't even working out in the gym, it's just you, just like you just close up of your of your face, just sweating. And you got your hard hat on and your vest, and so then it pans to you, just like making a, a sandwich. A, <laughs> no, adjusting the surveying thing, and then you plant that foot just to show that you're back. 
Just to end it. One with tear. <laughs> <laughs> with a wince. Um, or put on the headset. Little, we can do a little full body cast one, and then he just says, "Stand in stuff forever." And yeah, then like, like ever, the, if, ever. Once, ever. once I, once I can fully recover. Once the pin comes out, whatever yeah. day the pin comes out, yeah, we'll record that night. So I'll be, it'll be the first thing I do once the pin comes out. Yeah, be great. <laughs> I want to well, see. You hopefully, know, you <laughs> can keep the pin and you can bring it for him. That'd be fun, dude. I tell you what, like without. <laughs> so I thought this pin was gonna be like you know something small. You, you gotta think that is two inches, dude. They told me it's going to be like halfway through the middle of my foot, like almost to your arch, out your toe. That's how long this freaking pin's going to be. Are you nervous? I'm not nervous because nothing like that really bugs me, but it's just what if the it talks, thought of it. What if it talks trash to you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's me down here. It's just the, the thought of it. Whip. <laughs> you can't walk. <laughs> <coughs> Tom well, Brady would play with this. But I, he I, He would. <laughs> he probably is. It's probably one out each Dude, toe. I freaking walked all over the place with it. It's that just... is true. He he had it when we went to Indy. He I had it when I went to Boston. Him. Oh, you know what I think it really was. And Holly's gonna be like, "Yeah, you didn't get it softball." When I get it, you were running all over freaking Quidditch land. You know, <laughs> the Harry Potter. It could have been Quidditch. <laughs> It could have been Quidditch. <laughs> when you fell off the broom? <laughs> aren't you, you? Yeah, I was going to say, aren't you usually in the air not using your feet in that game? But what happens when you fall off? You should be better. Play power cribbage when you can knock people <laughs> pa- off the broom. Power. You just take the broom and just power swing, quiz. <laughs> swing it at people. Um, <laughs> hey, it, I want you to do this, though. You know how uh, Russell did like those fake t- two-minute drills where he was just like huddling up? You saw the video. Oh, by right? himself? Yeah. yeah. You just, I'll let you borrow one of these. Have it, you know, and then you're just sitting at home. Plug, saying, saying plugged into nothing, stuff. and you're just sitting there, and you're just practicing your intros. Uh-huh. <laughs> we got Craig on the mic. Hey guys, what's up? It's me. It's me. I'm here. Sorry. Oh, that wasn't a good redo. That oh, one. That. both horrible. <laughs> From the top. <laughs> I probably won't do that. No, you should. It'll be better when I just come in right, like literally. Once I figure it out, maybe I'll come directly from the hospital. Is it supposed to be a Friday? I have no idea. <laughs> It'll probably be a Tuesday ish. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I really yeah. want to hear these intros from him, though. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. Um, well, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, we got we can start our other one, and then uh, when our special guest comes on, we can uh, keep it rolling so we can get a couple more going. We're at 45 minutes right now. So shout-outs. I'm going to shout out uh, you know, the, the doctor for actually hitting the pocket. It, it, I needed it. It felt good. I'd also like to shout out the guy that traded with me in fantasy football. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say his name because we're best friends, Mark Warren. Mark Warren, great guy. He was the one. He was my coach. He's all SPSL back in basketball land. He was my coach. I I worshipped him. I had a, a I cut out newspaper clippings of his, and because he was my coach when I was like in fifth or sixth grade, and he was a high schooler, um, plastered all over my wall. Lo and behold, we're back. You know, it's life comes full circle, and we're friends. So shout out to Mark Warren. Love the guy. Who wants to go next? I'll do a shit out. Oh, okay. To the Bonnie Lake prompt care <laughs> that took 45 <laughs> minutes for a five minute test. And if they listen to this, oh well. I love a good shit out. So that, I'm happy that you, yeah, that was good. There's a lot of emotion there. It was. Were you thinking about giving them a shit out the whole the whole drive here? As soon as they, as soon as they made me sit and wait. Like, like, I I'm have an going, appointment? Yeah. Shit out. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Uh, what about uh, you, Cor? I will shout out uh, Brandon and Felicia. I hope you enjoyed your game. They are in. They would have been in Denver to see the Philadelphia Eagles Broncos game. Lose, lose and to the Broncos. So I hope it was an enjoyable time. You know what I really want them to do? I really want them to meet Peyton Manning while they're in Denver, just uh, randomly. I mean, I hope for the best for them. That'd be amazing. <laughs> That'd be an amazing moment. I told them to take. Uh, their their little one and dress them dress her up like an eagle, yes. And then like hold it like the lion hold her like the Lion King, and then hopefully he can get a football during warm ups because they have row one seats uh behind the end zone in that area, so hopefully they got a football. We got right at row one, huh? Yeah, hopefully they got a football. Where row one? Where? Uh, in and, the, and end like zone? the corner end zone area. Okay. Is he and so is he wearing? What jersey is he wearing? I think he's wearing his Eagles Brian Dawkins jersey because Dawkins played on both those teams. That's kind of cool, yeah. but I would also 
I mean, who knows who's going to make it in the end zone? Maybe you just get their kickers, and, and maybe maybe the kicker that kicker will look and be like, "Oh, <laughs> hey, he's got my jersey. Here's a game ball. I'll dismiss this field goal over there to him. <laughs> I'll just, I'll no, I'll I'll hook it through. <laughs> I'll hook it right through and <laughs> see if I can land it in his lap." <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, everyone, thanks so much for listening. Uh, have a great Thanksgiving. I think this is the Thanksgiving, the, the one before Thanksgiving. <laughs> we didn't even and talk we didn't even talk about, about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Well, it's Thanksgiving. All right. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, that, everyone. That's cool. Um, Don't eat gravy. Oh. Ah, I got it in. Get all Booyah. the gravies. Get all the gravies. <laughs> if you don't catch that reference, go back to last year. Uh, and and listen to that one. We didn't. We, we I even, talked about it then. I even specifically <laughs> sent a text this week. Said, "Hey, we need to talk about Thanksgiving. We're and next week's the Friday before." I'm just looking forward to stuffing, standing stuffing, standing stuffing. Uh, let's do a standing qu- and stuffing. Yes, right, let's do this real quick. Quick, quick. Shout out, shit out. Best, worst. What are you looking forward to for Thanksgiving? What's your shout out? Go, Corey. I just said it. I'm looking forward to stuffing, and I'm least looking forward to all the shoppers at the store. Okay. Right before Thanksgiving, not knowing where anything is. <laughs> Craig? I'll do a shout-out to mashed potatoes and a shit-out <laughs> shit out to, to <laughs> gravy. It's funnier that way. <laughs> you all shout-out mashed potatoes. <laughs> I hope they're listening, and they know what they bring value to my life. <laughs> uh, I, and, and what, you're shitting out the gravy? Yeah. Shit out gravy. Would you just have plain? Was it butter? What do you put on the mashed no, potatoes? I bet you mashed potatoes are pissed that you shit out the gravy because they, they probably love the gravy. They probably love the gravy. Dude, mashed potatoes. A warm also bath like for the uh, mashed potatoes. Some of the green garlic herbs in mashed potato mixed in there. You're oh. taking a warm bath away from mashed potatoes. No. Yeah, mashed, they mashed are probably upset at you. They don't, they don't want your shout out anymore. Uh, I, I like to uh, I like to shit out um, just uh, I'm shitting out. Like the yams, I'm, I'm, you're I'm, going I'm, to. I'm off. Eat them. I'm off. I'm off the yam train. I was on the yam train. I'm off the yam train. I don't know why. I just don't sound good this year. Uh, but I am shouting out all the Patreons that uh, so they have a great Thanksgiving. Off the uh, yam track. Apollo, Jamie, dashing Jamie, Kenny, James Roberts, Jamie Roberts, Travis Johnson, Ben Illman, Veronica Lara, Homer Robertson, Jared Skelly. Hopefully, see him soon. Shekinah Sarver, Anon Aber, Ira Potter, Amanda Keating. Cassie Spencer, Seth Loop, Adam Kenny, Eric Madrid, Holly Graf, Kellen Hall. I would like to give you guys, uh, just wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. Just enjoy. Just That's, take it in. Just take, yeah. You're entitled to it. Yeah. You're entitled to enjoy You're yourself. entitled to so, the, 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 the Thanksgiving of not enjoying it rules don't apply to you. <laughs> Have a great day, week and great Thanksgiving. Goodbye. Hello.